Okay, Helianthus annuus. It's a, it's a very common uh, North American plant. These are monsters. These have been bred over uh, hundreds of years. Actually, I think the Russians did a lot of breeding of sunflowers of uh, Helianthus annuus, which again is a native North American sunflower family member. I mean, goddamn, Astraci is named after these bastards. There's multiple different species of Helianthus. This is Helianthus annuus. Again, it's been bred like hell. Uh, it's I think a, a most of the bigger ones originated uh, in Mesoamerica, and they were also a, a common staple food of many indigenous tribes. Now you can see they're all facing east. Uh, people think that sunflowers generally follow the sun. That is not, uh, that's not the case. The younger flowers follow the sun, and then once they get big, they all face east. And it's thought, at least it's thought, that they do that because facing east, they heat up uh, a lot quicker. And that's because the sun, of course, rises in the east. So the flowers heat up quicker, and when the flowers are warm, they tend to attract pollinators uh, much more easily and much faster than they would otherwise uh, if they were if they were not, I guess. You know, they, you want to get hot, you know, the sunrise in the east, you want to catch that sun early morning hours, warm up real quick and what the shit, you get the pollinators going, you know, and then by midday, uh, you know, you're hotter than you would be if you were facing away from the sun. Obviously, it's going to take, you know, by noon, a flower that's facing east is going to be warmer a lot sooner than it would if it was facing away from the sun since the sun comes up in a goddamn east, you know? I don't know, what do you want? You get it or what? Jesus Christ. Okay, look, you got the... Hey, Tomentos hairs again. Look at just these monsters. Look at the phyleries on these bastards. They're huge. And this is really an ideal way... I mean, I could do a banger intro in an Asteracea here. I mean, this is not a single flower. This is technically what's called a capitula. Remember, a capitula is a sunflower family-specific term. I mean, it's a couple other plant families you could use it for, but mostly you hear capitula, they're talking about Asteracea. And you got, uh, this is not one flower. This is composed of many, many flowers. You get in there, look, you got at least probably 300 little flowers in there. And an Asteraceae, the individual flowers are called the florets. And there you go. You get up and you look at those individual florets. You can see they got five lobes right there. See how they look like a star? Five lobes. And then, uh, of course, in Asteraceae, you have what's called centripetal maturation. Centripetal flower maturation. Meaning that the flowers mature from the outside they start maturing on the outside in. Remember, that for and for asters, they go through the male phase first, uh, and then they turn female. And again, holy shit, this is going to be a long video. I'm sorry. Hopefully you're sitting down, you got a nice cup of coffee or something, all right? All right? You, you want, no one's asking. I'm not begging you to watch this. I don't care. You complain about the length. I don't give a shit. Anyway, you can see right there, these have, uh, these have already pollinated. You can see the seeds there. They're already pollinated, already matured. These are still going off. These are in the female phase. You get up there. You can see they're in a the female phase because they have those, what's called the style, which is a little Y-shaped thing. It bends, the, the branches of the Y bend back uh, towards the outside like little bug antenna. You can't, it's hard to see here because these actual florets are rather tiny. But you can see the styles there with the, the, the style branches bent outwards like in a little Y antenna. And those are in the female phase. Now before those styles bent back like that, they were in what's called the male phase, because uh, Asteraceae is secondary pollen presentation. So you have a fused anthers. Very weird thing going on here. You know, a lot of a lot of flowers like Beraginaceae, etc., a lot of plant families, you know, this, the anthers, the stamens, the male parts, are sticking out. They're exerted. They look like little bug antennas. Not so in Asteraceae. In Asteraceae, the anthers are fused into a central column, okay? And uh, what makes that interesting, basically, is that they're fused in a central column, and then as uh, the style pushes up out of that central column, it scrapes that pollen off the inside of that fused anther column, and uh, and basically as the style comes out, the female part, it comes up, and before it splits open, it's, it exposes that pollen to pollinators, okay? And then once it's uh, all the pollen's uh, exposed to pollinators, and it's, and it's uh, you know, basically the pollinators got, got the pollen and what this shit, then that style, okay? It style opens up like that, and the branches recurve, and that's when you're in a female phase. So you can actually look at one of these florets. I don't see any that are in the male phase still. You can look at these florets and tell they're all in the female phase. These are obviously done. Remember, there's that centripetal uh, flower maturation there. These are already matured and done. These are still going off, and they're in the female phase awaiting uh, pollen from other flowers. Ideally, other flowers, but I guess they can also pollinate themselves. I mean, Jesus Christ, you got a lot to work with. You got 300 flowers, it's 300 different, uh, you know, uh, gene bag toss-ups going on. Tossing up the genes. 
you know, shaking them up, remixing them. I have to oversimplify what's going on uh, <laughs> in terms of forming a zygote. But uh, it's pretty cool. A crop, that, a, a native North American plant that's been turned into a massive food crop. Again, all facing east when mature. Okay, and one last thing I do want to tell you, just for diagnosis, because a lot of people are turned off by Astraceae because it's a fucking pain in the ass as a family. They all look the same. They're just yellow flowers from a distance. You'll learn more about it. It's one of the most fascinating plant families on Earth. It's got 28,000 species. They're fucking everywhere. The tropics, the tundra. They're not in the Arctic, but they're, uh, they're other, other than that. Aside from the Arctic, aside from the poles, they're all over the globe. All right, this is what's going on. This is the hottest prototype in terms of... Uh, photosynthetic evolution on planet earth so another thing you want to pay attention to which here is these orange bracts right here these are called the phyleries and they basically circumscribe they go around the whole capitula the whole flower head and if you're looking at a species the dyc damn yellow composite or any other sunflower family member that's what you want to pay attention to everyone's always there send me pictures like this hey identify this flower for me I, it doesn't do shit for me I, you're wasting my time and you're wasting yours i can't without without you sending me a picture of the back side of that flower too with all the phyleries and shit in there i can't help you i mean sometimes i can help you you could you could tell you know you but uh but uh you know mostly you're looking at the phyleries and then you can also look at the shape of that that uh the flower head itself i mean is it flat is it globose Obviously, in the sunflowers, it's it's flat, you know, in a geely, in a in a species like a Rudbeckia or a, or a Helenium, it's globose. It's not flat. It's more like an actual dome-shaped flower head. But mostly, those phyleries really help you. You got one series of phyleries. You got a couple series of phyleries. Do they recurve? Are they flat? Are they impressed to the, the size of the capitula, the involucre, or what? Always get a picture of those phyleries. Pay attention to that. It'll open your fucking eyes in terms of paying attention to Asteraceae. They, they won't just be DYCs anymore. You'll really respect them for what they are, which, again, is the most ecologically successful plant family on planet Earth.